Okay. Next up, the Midwest region, the top right region here, Houston against Northern Kentucky. Uh, I don't really have too, too many takes on Northern Kentucky, but I will say that I think that the big key here for Houston is just Marcus Sasser's health. If Marcus Sasser is healthy, this becomes a, a very real cakewalk for Houston. Yeah. If Marcus Sasser is not healthy, I worry about Houston moving forward. Yeah, I think that the first two games that they'll play should be okay no matter what, and you hope that that buys Sasser enough time to get healthy. Uh, I know we'll talk Iowa and Auburn in a moment here. I just don't trust either team to be able to pick them over such a disciplined group that Houston is. Like, If there's one thing you always know about a Kelvin Sampson team, is that they're going to show up and they're going to compete their asses off every single night. They bring it with the intensity, and those are not teams that – I'm going to bet against unless I feel like there's a real strategic or logistical matchup nightmare that they would have to deal with Iowa, Auburn, or certainly any 16 seed is not going to be able to provide that for the Cougars. Okay. Let's go to that eight, nine matchup, which is Iowa and Auburn. I have no idea what to think of this, but I will say the thing that I am most excited about seeing in this matchup is we're going to get Iowa taking on a really athletic Auburn team that is going to be a real it's going to be really interesting to watch Chris Murray against an Auburn team that is very good defensively that has a lot of size a lot of athleticism to be able to throw at Chris Murray and we're going to learn a lot about just what Chris Murray is able to deal with I think in terms of physicality uh, with that like explosive athleticism with also real interior defense with Janai Broom yeah I I think the way that Auburn can pressure the basketball in so many different spots while protecting the basket with broom on the backside is key for them. Uh, Iowa can really shoot it and get hot, but they're so bipolar. They have some games where they're an amazing offensive group and that just carries them all the way through. And they have some games where they look like the right hand's not talking to the left and they don't know where to go when they absolutely need a bucket. And that tends to happen when Murray gets limited in some regard, or there's a lot of athleticism, good defensive wings that can guard him. Look, Auburn is the least enjoyable offense to watch in the country, in my opinion. Cannot stand watching them try to score the basketball. Like It's a lot of guards that dribble and point at each other with nothing happening and then taking some sort of a contested 20-footer. I don't think that they're going to push Iowa on the defensive end of the floor the way that the Hawkeyes are really susceptible to being pinpointed. I don't know where to go in this matchup because I think that you know on one end, Auburn's defense is great and Iowa's offense is great. On the other end, Iowa's defense is terrible and Auburn's offense is terrible. So another coin flip eight, nine matchup for me here, Sam. I like the point you brought up about ball pressure. I probably will take Auburn in this game because of that. I would have bet so much money. I was picking against Auburn in the NCAA (laughs) tournament this year coming in before the teams. But I do think that this is an interesting matchup for Auburn that Uh, could allow them to have a little bit of success. Okay, that matchup, by the way, uh, minus one and a half for Auburn. Okay, Miami against Drake. Now, with Miami, again, we have a very real injury concern here. Uh, Norchad O'Meara is their six-foot-seven center who is one of the best players in the ACC this season. You know, he played one minute against Duke and went out. Like, if he's not healthy... This becomes a real danger spot for Miami because Drake is a very, very, very interesting, intricate offense that will force them to really be spaced out and then could, if Omir is not healthy, be able to take advantage on the interior at a really high level, uh, led by Tucker DeVries, Roman Penn, uh, even Sardar T- Calhoun, Garrett Sturts. This is a really, really good Drake team. But re- really, it comes down to seeing Tucker DeVries against high-level athletes against Miami. That's going to be the interesting matchup here. Yeah, so Drake is, as far as I'm checking my notes here to make sure of this, they are the only team to be in kind of the top 45 Ken Palm to receive a 12 seed. Uh, the, the last team to, to do so, LaSalle when they were able to, to make their run 12 uh, or, or Drake, lower. Drake is Drake is 66. 
right now. 66, what am, I, what am I looking at? I'm looking at Bartorvik, I believe. Okay, so wrong metric here, but in Bartorvik. So, Bart, uh, Bartorvik has them at like 44, you're saying. Yeah, yeah. and the adjusted okay. uh, net ratings on Bartorvik, Drake is the highest rated team to receive a 12 seed or lower since LaSalle, and they made a run to the Sweet 16. Really, really experienced group. Ton of seniors who know how to play. Penn is the underrated piece for this when they need a bucket because teams are trying to take away DeVries. He can go out there yeah. and get one. They're stout on the defensive end of the floor, too. I think that's an underrated aspect of this Drake team. Intricate offense, great pieces and experience there. But because they're old, they know how to defend a little bit. It's going to come down to health for Miami. I, I'm going to watch this Jordan Miller versus Tucker DeVries matchup to the, you know, so the cows come home in June, trying to figure out what it says about DeVries as a, an actual prospect. It's a really important game for him. But man, do I love Drake. It's going to be hard for me to, to not pick them here. It's funny, too, because I really like Miami. I think Isaiah Wong is a really underrated player nationally. Uh, a guy that I think is probably one of the 15 to 20 best players in this NCAA tournament. Nigel Pack is a guy that you can always trust to be able to fire away from three. Jordan Miller is a terrific player as well. I think Miami's probably just a little bit too athletic for Drake at the end of the day. But that Jordan Miller matchup against Tucker DeVries, man, like you said, that's that's what this is going to come down to, as well as Norchad O'Meara's health. If O'Meara is healthy, I think Miami wins this. If he is not healthy, I think this is a real toss up that could be complicated. And for what it's worth, Miami is only a three and a half point favorite against Drake, which kind of says to me that I wonder if Omir is like a hundred percent going into this thing. Yeah. I, I don't have the same Intel that many of those odds makers do. Uh, but that tells me a lot about where I'm at with Drake right now. Yeah. I'm, I think I'm going to roll with Drake. Okay. Next up the four 13 in that region is Indiana against Kent state. Kent state is a team that has played very, very tough against some really good teams this year. They lost Charleston by two. They lost to Houston by five. They lost to Gonzaga by seven. They have some really, really good guards in Sincere Carey and Malik Jacobs. I am a little bit worried about Indiana here, but the key for Indiana is I really don't actually know who's going to be capable of guarding Trace Jackson Davis on the interior. And we have seen the Trace Jackson Davis – Uh, not only might be the best player in college basketball right now, certainly is a case in my opinion. Uh, Trace Jackson Davis was also absolutely incredible last year in the NCAA tournament against Wyoming. Yeah. Uh, He he was an absolute beast in that game. I feel like Indiana wins here, but I feel like this Kent state team is going to give them every single thing that they can handle. Yeah. Kent state really good defensive group, really, really good on the perimeter. They turn you over a lot. And since your carry can go out there and, and get his own. I've watched a lot of Hoosiers games this year, Sam, and I think that there's a couple things that stand out to me. One is they either have a game where they play through Jalen Hutchifino or they play through Trace Jackson Davis based on the matchups, based on how teams are trying to play them. One of those two guys is going to step up. This is clearly a Trace Jackson Davis game. The second thing is they just need to hit shots. Their offense can get really stalled out and they're a lot easier to guard when teams aren't scrambling to close out on the perimeter after they shadow double team or or send a hard trap at Trace Jackson Davis. If Indiana can't penalize teams for sending two at them, they're going to have an earlier exit than we'd like. I love this Hoosiers team for the way that they compete, the way that they defend. They're really smart group and they play together. They just have to make shots. I think that that is, Absolutely correct. How do we think that Jalen hood Shafino performs as a freshman going up against the Kent State team that does have like a very experienced backcourt in Sincere Carey and Malik Jacobs? Like those two have been around. They also have Jalen Sollinger, who's a little bit younger, but Sollinger has been uh, really quite good as a shooter throughout the course of this season. How, how do we feel about hood Shafino trying to deal with some of these older, experienced guards that again, 
they know what they're doing. Like they've been around, they have, they've played in tough games for years upon years now. Kent state, uh, this team has won 20 games in essentially three of the last four years. And the year that they didn't was the COVID shortened season where they were 15 and eight and well on their way to winning 20 games. So when it comes to Jalen hood, Shafino, I can't go off of anything other than what we've seen this year. And he is unflappable in pressure. I'm just going to keep yep. going back to that road win at Purdue where he carried them, particularly in the first half, and hit tough bucket after tough bucket down the stretch to keep their lead going. He can walk into a hostile environment like that and be poised and calm the entire time. I'm not worried about how he's going to react to a big stage or some guards who can get into him and try to apply a little bit of pressure. Uh, I feel good about where Hushifino's at. I agree. And he's also bigger than these guards, and he's a Huge. terrific point of attack defender. I do think Indiana wins this game. I think it is going to be a very, very tight game, though. Kent State is a really good, really experienced, really old team. Okay, that, by the way, is a minus four and a half hmm. uh, point line in favor of Indiana. So that's a little bit tighter than what you would expect. Okay, Iowa State against the winner of Mississippi State and Pitt. I do not want to spend a lot of time on Mississippi State and Pitt because that is the most nondescript NCAA tournament game that's ever existed in history. <laughs> uh, give me a winner real quick. Uh, Pitt. Uh, I'm going to go Mississippi State because I don't yeah. trust anything with this Pitt team, but sure. Uh, I'm going to say Mississippi State because their defense is going to stop Pitt from scoring more than like 55 points in this game. Yeah, But Iowa State, on the other hand, is at the very least like an intriguing team to discuss. They were terrible coming down the stretch. Like this is a team that started 13 and two and finished 19 and 13. Like they lost, they lost 11 of their last 17 games. I feel like this is not a great team. If I'm being completely honest, I think they got a little bit lucky uh, going a, up against a Baylor team that they have very real specific matchup advantages against. I mean, I don't feel great about Iowa State advancing in this tournament. I mean, Jaron Holmes is a tough player who has NCAA tournament experience. Gabe Kalsher is a really tough defender. Mm -hmm. Osun Oshuni is a terrific defensive player. Tamon Lipsy is a guy that I think is going to be a really, really good player. He's just a little bit turnover prone right now for Iowa State. I just feel like I know that they've played like the world's hardest schedule in the big 12. Uh, they are literally fourth this year in strength of schedule. I, I just find it very difficult to believe that they're going to advance particularly far in this tournament with how like horribly they have played recently. Yeah. They're, they're one guard short. Like Hassan Ward has come in and given them a little bit of a jolt off the bench. The last couple of games, I know Otzelberger has been trying to tinker with the rotation, particularly now that Caleb grill is gone, just trying to figure out what works for them, but they, they feel like they're one guard short. You know, I, I said it in a, in a tweet as soon as the brackets camp came out, like if it's Mississippi state versus Iowa state in the six eleven matchup, it's probably going to be like 17, 16 at the half. Like neither team yep. can score and they're both tremendous and always dialed in on the defensive end. Uh, not really a, a fun or appealing brand of basketball. And as we're looking forward to that second round game there against Xavier Kennesaw state, I guess they have the defensive chops to give the Musketeers some trouble, but you can't feel good about any of those three Iowa state Pitt, or Mississippi really advancing comfortably. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I think that a Mississippi state, Iowa State game would probably set basketball back by like 15 years uh, with those defenses just completely dominating the offenses. I think there's a chance Iowa State gets to the second round. I just, I mean, I think there's a chance Mississippi State gets to the second round. I think there's a chance Pitt gets to the second round. I just don't like any of these teams and don't want to spend much more time talking about them. Okay. Next up, Xavier and Kennesaw State. We shouted out Amir Abdur Rahim. Uh, recently on the show uh, with Kennesaw State. Xavier is an interesting team, if only because they have dealt recently with a few injuries. Zach Fremantle, I believe, is going to miss the rest of the season, right? Yep. Yeah, he's done. Yeah, he is done, which means you have Sule Boom, Colby Jones forming one of the best backcourts in the entire country, mixed with Jack Nunji, who is a seven foot floor spacer at the center position. And now they play a little bit more traditionally as opposed to before 
with Zach Fremantle, they were able to play like two guys that are six foot 10 or taller who can really space the floor, can really pass, can really play make. They can also defend a little bit. Uh, with Jerome Hunter, it's, you know, more of a defensive oriented four man that isn't really much of a scoring threat at a super high level. He can finish on the interior, but like, it, it's just not quite as, not quite as dangerous. It feels like offensively in the Xavier team, is one that has been really, really good offensively throughout the course of this season. I still will pick them to beat Kennesaw State, but Kennesaw State is probably a little bit more uh, live here than what you would think. Yeah, and, and whether it's Kennesaw State or the next round, we were just talking about the you know, slug-festing defenses of the Cyclones and the Bulldogs. I don't feel comfortable with Xavier right now after watching what we did in the Big East Championship game and the way that Marquette was really able to pressure them and kind of overwhelm them with just intensity and athleticism. I think that Mississippi State and Iowa State can do that defensively. Like Iowa State three wins over Baylor this year. I think of Baylor as being a fairly good comp for a team like Xavier where they're led by their guard play. They have a little bit of size on the interior but they're more shot makers and skill than they are put their head down, go into traffic and get to the basket for easy ones. Uh, I'd be really curious to see if Xavier can pull out a, a tough matchup against the Cyclones. Yeah, it's intriguing. I think Xavier probably is the favorite at this point to go to the sweet 16 out of this group. I mean, yeah. that Xavier team against any of the, against Iowa state and Mississippi state defensively, particularly would be a really intriguing matchup to me having to watch those two teams be able to play Xavier, who is as good as they are offensively. I think Mississippi State actually would particularly cause Xavier some problems. Just with Tolu Smith on the interior, he can really move his feet a little bit on defense. Uh, they are a tough physical team, and I think Chris Jans is a terrific coach. I might pick Mississippi State to the Sweet 16 out of that region. Whoa, we'll yeah. see whenever I get there. I feel <laughs> not great about that. Uh, okay, the most... Uh, the most competitive matchup of the first round, I feel like, is going to be Texas A&M and uh, Penn State. I think both of these teams are probably a little bit underseeded for how good yes. they are. Uh, Texas A&M particularly, I think, should be like a five seed. And Penn State, I think, should be in an eight-nine game. Uh, Penn State has Jalen Pickett and Seth Lundy. Texas A&M has a terrific guard in Wade Taylor. They have a lot of just really high level depth kind of across the entire group there. Like Henry Coleman is like super physical on the mm -hmm. interior. Julius Marble has been like a terrific transfer addition for Michigan state. Uh, Tyrese Radford is just someone that you can rely on to create offense uh, consistently and like be like a connective guard next to Taylor. I do. Uh, Man, this is a hard one. This yes. is a really hard one for me. And both of these coaches, by the way, are absolutely terrific, I think, in game. Like, Buzz Williams is really, really good. You give him some time. I think he's going to really scheme up some ways to beat Penn State. And I think Shrews, Micah Shrewsbury is just an absolute stud in terms of creating real offensive firepower that can uh, really space out opposing teams. Like, this Penn State team, yep. they play super small and – they did get a matchup here with Texas A&M. Like Henry Coleman will try and pound them inside. You know, Julius Marble will try to like post them occasionally. But this is a matchup they can manage in terms of size, I think, which is big for them. I, that's why I'm going to go with Penn State in this one because they've beaten teams like this before and they know how to do it and they're very disciplined at getting to, to do so. Uh, they compete defensively because they're strong, not because they're big. They've got experience and guys who are physically strong and can hold their ground a little bit more. This is going to be, if, if you're not a fan of the charge, like cover your eyes and, and don't watch this game at all because Penn state is going to be flopping all over the place to try to draw offensive fouls against A&M. Um, I love Jalen Pickett. I'm getting closer and closer to having him as a top 40 or 45 guy because he just creates offense and is really, really good. This is going to be a fun game, really, really fun contrast of styles of great coaches. I just like what Penn state is doing right now, getting all the way to the big 10 championship games, a huge shot in the arm from them. Confidence wise, they are under here, but uh, I I'm going to go with the Nittany lions. 
I think I'm also going to go Penn State here as well. I think a big part of why Penn State's defense struggled uh, throughout the course of this season is just because of the size issue and because of uh, the fact that they just don't really crash the offensive glass at all. And I don't know that Texas A&M is going to like really be able to take advantage of the size based issues that Penn State has, that Penn State had throughout the course of the Big Ten season, not being able to manage a lot of those bigger monsters on the interior uh, that the Big Ten presents against them. Uh, that matchup, by the way, Xavier is an 11 and a half point favorite against Kennesaw State. Penn State is a two and a half point underdog against Texas A&M. The final matchup in that region is Texas and Colgate. Colgate is a live 15 seed, I think. This is another team that I think is probably underseeded. Uh, Col Colgate is a dangerous group. And I feel like we say that every year under Matt Langle. Yep. And I feel like they haven't gotten one yet, have they? No, and they have not gotten one. They played Wisconsin really tight last year. That was the Johnny Davis game where uh, yeah. Nellie, Nellie Cummings for Colgate, who's no longer there, he's at Pitt now, was really dangerous. And they're a much more balanced team than they were a year ago now that Cummings isn't in the picture. But they are the best three-point shooting team in the entire country. They're not very good defensively. They're not huge, but they space you out, and they are immaculate on the offensive end of the floor it's hard to see that working against the depth, the perimeter pressure, and all of the great defensive guards that the Longhorns can throw at them. But at the very least, it's going to be a fun contrast of styles. I think Texas is just going to like bludgeon them kind yeah. of with this yeah. team. Yep. But I will say, so part of what Colgate does is generally just kind of space you out, right? That's, it's what their goal is. And it's not like Texas had like a crazy amount of success playing a team like Baylor this year. They split the Baylor games, but I do think Baylor was able to score on them. And I wonder if Colgate being able to space them out in a similar way to Baylor does is going to be able to score on Texas. I just don't think that Colgate really has any shot to stop Texas at all. Yeah, I mean, look, nine out of ten dentists will recommend Colgate here, but I, I got to go with Texas. Yeah, no, I'm going to go Texas. Okay, let's dive deep here. Uh, make some picks on the region. Houston against Northern Kentucky. Houston. Iowa against Auburn. Toss up, I'll go Iowa. I'm going to go Auburn. Miami against Drake. Give me Drake. I don't trust the health with Miami. I'm going to take Miami. Indiana against Kent State. I'll take the Hoosiers. I'm also taking Indiana. Iowa State against Mississippi State. Or Pitt. Whoever knows how that one's going to shake out. I'll go the Cyclones to be safe. Okay. I'm going to go Mississippi State to beat Pitt and to beat Iowa State. Uh, Xavier, Kennesaw State. Xavier. I'm also going Xavier. Okay. Texas A&M, Penn State. Oof. Another, this is one of the, the most fun first round matchups we'll have, but I'll go with the Nittany Lions. I'm going to go Texas A&M the more I think about it. Uh, Texas against Colgate. Yeah, Texas. Okay. Uh, Houston against Iowa for you. Yeah, I'll go Houston. I'm going Houston over Auburn. Drake against Indiana for you. Oh, I'm going with the Hoosiers. Okay, I have Miami, Indiana. I'm going to go Indiana there. Uh, I just think Trace Jackson Davis against the uncertainty of Omir is probably a safer bet. Yeah. Mississippi State Xavier for me. Iowa State Xavier for you. Iowa State against Xavier. I'll go with the Cyclones. Okay, I'm going to go Mississippi State against Xavier there, and I'm going to take Mississippi State. Yeah. Uh, Penn State, Texas for you. I'm going with Texas in this one. Just too much defensive firepower. Okay, and I have Texas A&M against Texas. I am going to go Texas A&M there. Oh, I love it. I think Texas A&M is pretty good. I know we just talked about how tough that first round matchup is. Yeah. I think Texas A&M is pretty good. Uh, Houston against Indiana you have, I believe. Yeah, upset special for me. I'm going IU. Okay, this is like entirely dependent on Marcus Sasser. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to assume that by the second weekend, Marcus Sasser is healthy and I'm going to take Houston there. Okay. Uh, I, you have 
Iowa State, I believe, and against Texas. Texas. Yep, and I'll go with where all my exes live, which is Texas. Okay, I have Mississippi State, Texas a and I'm going to take Texas A&M there. Nice. Uh, all the way to the Elite Eight. And then you have Houston against Texas. Uh, I have Indiana against Texas. You have Indiana against Texas, that's right. Indiana against Texas, and I will – ooh, ooh, I don't know if I like this one. I'll go with the Hoosiers. Okay. I have Houston against Texas A&M and I'm going to take Houston to the final four. Uh, means I have two one seeds and a two. I believe you have, what do you have? You have a one, a two and a four. 